Hello, hello, and welcome to this video where I'm just going to program in some BQN and show you what it's like. Um, so for those who are not familiar, BQN is a array language which is quite different from the ordinary languages you people usually use. And I really love the language because it's very flexible and powerful uh, and there's not much content on it. So I thought it would be nice to do a video because I like watching things, videos of things I love uh, and, and I really like BQN so I missed it on YouTube so I wanted to create a video which people can watch and just have some insight on what it might be like to work in it. Uh, what I'm going to make is a uh, Asteroids clone game. Um, I'm not going to make it very pretty, the code, but uh, it's just going to be like easy and relax. This is what it's going to look like. So I already made it. So this is um, what I made before. And I'm just going to walk through all the codes and type it. It's just some ASMR, <laughs> if you will. Uh, so you're this little special guy. If you don't know asteroids, you can shoot uh, the rocks, the asteroids, and they'll split. Um, and usually you get a score, but I don't have a score system because <laughs> I don't know. I liked just this part uh, where you just shoot the rocks. And if you hit the rock, you die, of course. And you respawn the center. And uh, you have three lives. And if you die, you just restart the game. So uh, there are some interesting challenges with this, like uh, how to draw the rocks, how to do the state logic. So it's interesting maybe to see how you would program something like this. Um, so I have an empty file. Um, to create this, um, there is a very cool, um, what's it called, hook, I think called, uh, are made for the Raylib game engine. The Raylib game engine is a game engine written in C, which is very open source and modular. Uh, and uh, a name called Brian E on Discord, he made a guy named Brian E on Discord, he made a, a, an implementation for it. And he didn't just, because um, they have an interface which you can hook up to with, with uh, lots of functions. Uh, he made implementation for that, so you can hook up to all the normal Raylib functions. But he also is trying to BQN the Fium, so you can use it in a more uh, a way which is more natural to the language. So that's a cool basis to build interactive or visual or game stuff on, uh, and that's what I use to um, to make the game run. Uh, so this is a blank file where I'm going to build it. And first you need a bit of boilerplate, just some simple functions which tell the uh, program how to structure or what to use. Uh, I am not really going to explain it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I need a frame function. I can explain it later maybe, um, but for now um, it's easier to just see the, the, the game logic instead of the boilerplate. Um, oh. So this is a function which is going to be called every frame, and we have an on start, on start function, which is going to be called first time. Uh, the per frame needs to have a parameter which is with canvas, so we're going to draw a canvas. Um, I think if we run it, no, I'm missing something. Um, empty statement. Oh yeah, there needs to be something in these functions. And start missing operand. Mm. Oh yeah, it also needs the function. Oh yeah, it's a operand, so it needs to be an R. And to the left, the uh, game. That's where the game is. Um, and then I'm going to run the game object. So these adds are, this is calling a function and the add is just nothing, an empty object. And you need to give a parameter to for the function to be able to be run. That should run, no. Ah, 
of course I need to import all the libraries which I'm gonna use it doesn't just do everything uh, on its own so I'm gonna import from oh no, not from, <laughs> from uh, dot the slash dot the slash raylib dot bqn that's where the um, raylib files lives right here and I'm into subdirectories and from that I can deconstruct um, some uh, internal components I want one is color which I'm gonna also give the name C to use uh, one is window which is win and window one is font one is D for draw one is and mouse one is key one is ray map one is ray f pi so these are just functions I'm gonna need to make the game um yeah so that's the basis I guess oh no <laughs> still missing something um on start we have that mm. oh wait sorry I'm looking at the actual error so this is the log when I'm running and this is for running uh, single lines okay so I just needed to reference the right hand parameter which I don't really understand fully the boilerplate, so it doesn't really matter <laughs> for now. Uh, so if I run it, it opens the screen, only you guys don't see it, it's on the left side. So I have these flags, which I set to position it on the second screen. There it is, a blank screen. It's black because we told it in Draw Canvas what background color you want, you can also make it white, and it's white. Um, but I'll make it black. Okay, so we have a window, which is great because then we can draw stuff and that's actually quite hard to do normally, but we have the whole library, so it makes it easy. Um, so let's first create, I think, the player. because That's quite important for a game. We create a player class. A class is just a function which exports a value. Uh, and the player has a position which is a zero, zero at the start, I guess. Uh, velocity, which is also zero, zero. It has a rotation, which is zero at the start. Um, and it has some life, or life, I mean. So like, that's how alive it is, or life points, I don't know what you would call it. I can export that one, cause that's how I'll use later to clean up things that are dead. Uh, so I'll keep that exported. Okay, so these are the values a player has. I'm just gonna place them inside the object. Uh, I'm gonna do a lot of bad practices here in this code um, because uh, it just makes it approachable, I think. And I'll point out where I can or where I understand what pr bad practices are. So, you know, if you would write it yourself, that that isn't really the best way to do it. Um, Okay, I'm looking at my old code. Uh, let's give it some life at zero, because then it will be dead instantly. Um, and we need to draw the player. Um, as you could see, the last one had um, a nice triangle with a bit of shape and, an, and a flame. But we'll start off with just a triangle, because that's, that's simpler. Um, okay, let's go back again. I'll make a draw function, which is gonna call a draw function from the ray from raylib. It's gonna, it's gonna draw a triangle. I think that's a thing. Lip triangle. No, that's not a thing. Okay, uh, ray. Then we go. So if there's no, no version in raylib, we're gonna go to ray fi. So the, all the standard exported functions. Look for a triangle. Oh triangle and there you see it has a draw triangle which one's a vector 2 vector 2 vector 2 and a color so I I would guess those are the positions of the triangle and then a color um, okay so a color is the left argument we just do white 
on the right side, we want to give three coordinates. And if you think about it, uh, a triangle just starts at zero, zero, then one, uh, so the X you want to move to the right, one, and you want to stay at zero, and then half, so you move to the center, and then you go up, one that's five, like that. Um, so now we have a draw function. We also want to create a player. So let's create a player. This is a, a thing which is uh, good to watch out for. Uh, capitalization is an, it's like it's capitalization insensitive. That's the correct word if you define variables. So this one will override this one. Uh, which means after doing this, if you call player, you're getting an instance of the object and not the object itself, which is something to watch out for. Now it doesn't really matter, but maybe it's always better to do like an uh, instance. I don't know. I'll keep it like this now. I'll pass the player onto the game, which we'll get here, player. Um, so we create an instance with the player here. And here we can do player.draw and pass it something so it will run. Um, it, it's not happy. Let's give it some more space. Triangle, file not, oh yeah. I'm doing draw D, but D refers to draw and we want to use right I. Still not happy. File name triangle not found. Oh, it's draw triangle. Okay. Draw triangle. Oh, I've selected it. Still not happy. Must be either anti list. Anti list are not present. W parameter. Oh, yeah, of course, because these ray, uh, ray of five functions only want their parameters on the right, not on the left side. So, why is actually the last parameter? Uh, let's hook it there. Um, couldn't get X. What is this result? In? This is lovely. The show uh, thing which prints the variable also returns the value. So you can just plop it in between anywhere. And here you see, here's the problem. The color is uh, a list itself but because I use the hook. It, um, unencapsulated, it opened it up inside this array. I'm not very good at the terms and I'm not very good at the language still, but <laughs> sorry. Um, so if we use that one, then we get the correct one, but it's too encapsulated. Ah, let's encapsulate it and then hook it. That works or it doesn't because it's still crashing. So the draw function player is not an interface. Uh, a namespace that's because um, this is this function is running in the while loop and the while loop wants um, get the right parameter of the while loop is the parameter you also returned so you also want to return the player on the last frame and there we go we should be drawing but we're not seeing anything and that's probably because this is pixel based and this is very small this is way too small to see it's only one pixel and half a pixel so what we can do with the magic of the arrays is um, transform it a bit we'll save this um, these coordinates uh, in a player shape variable and what we can do is um, create a function shape layer there's probably a better name for it where we take the player shape, we scale it up. So we multiply it by, for example, 30. So everything is the scale times 30, or yeah, scale of 30. And we can position it somewhere. And we want to position it to the position plus, and we want to do that for each um, point in the triangle. So this should work shape layer oh yeah i'm I, there should be something pointing to it being a function um 
expected array corresponding to structs and draw a triangle. Oh yeah, now I removed it here. Shape layer. Player. I'm gonna call that timbraces. There we go. Only we're still not seeing it. Okay, so draw triangles didn't work. Draw triangle lines does. I think it fills the black probably. I don't know. Anyways, uh, so if you run this, you can see there's a little triangle in the corner. Um, and it's in the corner because position is set to zero, zero, which doesn't really help. We can try to set it to a center because that's where it starts in the asteroids game. But we don't know the center. So uh, we need to calculate it. Um, this is a very bad practice, which I'm going to use now, which is uh, using global variables. Center. I'm going to make a variable called center. I'm going to make a variable called width and height. And those are all zero, zero for now. This works where you have to have a list and you decompose it in two different variables and then you compose it again into one variable because BQNist is awesome. <laughs> this is a very useful way to, uh, to uh, assign variables, I think, because it's very compact and quite readable. Um, so we need to know when the, um, the window is resized. Well, first we can just make a resize function where the width and height gets calculated. Uh, resize. Uh -oh. So need to be called. Uh, and here we just say width and height are equal to. Um, I'm going to peak. It's equal to um, win.get size. And center is equal to width and height divided by two. So this also works because this becomes one, or it's gonna do division by two on each element, uh, which is a list which is put into the center. If you think about it for, for a second, it, you see it works. Um, okay, we call this on start, just after the windows are created or are, are changed. Um, resize, oh. ah. resize, and add. I also like calling it like that it looks like what I'm used to. I just give it an empty array. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you give because we don't use it in here. And uh, we call it when we find that the window is resized. So I create a small block in here which has a predicate, so a question mark, uh, to determine if the window is resized that we can get from window. So window resized. Uh, if that's true, resize the window. Um, otherwise, don't do anything. Yeah. Okay. That should work. And then we assign at the start the player's position to the center. Because the player is always created after the resize the resize we do before creating anything, so we will get the center. Oh, or not. Um, why not? Resize. Oh yeah, because here I'm setting the value for a new variable called w, h, and center, but we want to change them. So that's how we do that. Um, yeah, okay. So if you run it, it's in the center, perfect. Okay, what we now want to do is move it, of course, because just a static image of a triangle isn't very, very fun to watch. Um, let's start with moving it forward, because that's like people find it very cool the way the rocket ship moves, but it's actually quite simple to do. Um, first, what we want is an update function. Uh, update, which is public, and we're gonna expose or no i'm gonna make a function where we say the position oh, position plus equals 
uh, velocity. So we're just going to add velocity to the position each frame. And this we're also going to call here first update. Oh. Update and then draw. Mm. Uh, and the velocity needs to have some value um, because if you draw it now, it's just going to stay still. And if you would give it some value, like one, it's going to move to the right in this case because the x value is one. Uh, we want to be able to control it. So um, let's create a function called boost. And the boost function will just give the velocity um, velocity um, a push in the direction the, the player is, watch, is looking. So we should somehow get from the rotation the direction. Um, this is just a pseudocode. Direction and this direction should be added. This doesn't work, of course. Um, so we need to have some way to calculate the direction. And that should do with rotation. Because uh, you just want a factor who is, which is offset from, the, from zero and points towards the rotation uh, uh, at a certain length, which is the speed at which it needs to move. So to get the rotation of something, there is a function, or there's this famous way of doing it, famous way. There's just this way of doing it, which is, I have it here. It looks like this. I rotate. Uh, um, if I give this an enter instead of a comma, you can see um, if we were to give this an x and a y value and a, an angle, oh, then we would do x multiplied by the cosinus of the angle, y multiplied by the sinus of the angle, x multiplied by the sinus, and plus y by the cosinus. You can read it. Um, so we first need to calculate uh, uh, sinus, which is just math of sin with x, oh no, with angle, and then cosinus with uh, cos. And here we already return the, value, the result, so this is it. Here we calculate rotation from a vector to an angle. Um, so in the boost function, we use this function. We give it a, a standard vector, which is just zero to the right or one to the right. So it's pointed to the right. And then we rotate it with the rotation that we have. Or actually, you want to use the position of the, in which the player is drawn, so down. Uh, that's the default direction. So that would be the negative one. Then we rotate this with our rotation. And then we get a vector, which is the direction. We also want the speed. So we multiply this vector by the, uh, the speed. And this is a variable if you want. Uh, it should be quite small. Okay. So we have a function where we change the, the velocity with a certain rotation and speed. Um, and we want to have some logic to listen to inputs, which is going to boost the ship. Uh, so let's write an input function. And here, uh, I'm going to look at the one again. We have some blocks with um, question marks in them, which are going to listen to stuff. This key down uh, is, is down key dot space, which is going to be our boost button, player dot boost. And then we give it just something for it to run. Uh, we can also give it a value um, just so this is another layer of control where you can change how much it boosts. So then we can change this to uh, the parameter we're giving, minus x. 
and then this should be a function. Okay, if I click space, nothing happens because we're not calling the input function. So this we're going to do every frame before the rest of the stuff. Okay, that should work. Oh, and it crashes. What does it say? Um, trying to read the file from non instance. Oh yeah, I'm calling player, but in this context, player um, player just refers to this class, uh, and you can't really access a class like that. So we need to pass in player, which again is going to override the main reference of uh, what what player means. Um, so we pass in player. That should work. No, still not. Um, see, boost not found. Boost. Um, ah, I'm not exporting it. Oh. 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 Okay, now I'm exporting it. Yeah, it's boosting the wrong way. Um, I guess I shouldn't do it negatively. Yeah. Okay, so now we can go down, but we also want to rotate, of course. Um, coincidentally, we wrote a rotate function, which you can use. Um, so, some more inputs. We have left and we have right. The left and right buttons. And we need a function which is going to handle the rotate. I called orient. That's what I called it last time where we just add rotation speed what speed to the um, to the rotation let's use pi because that's half a circle now uh, multiplied by zero to one or something and then we say rotation oh, rotation plus equals oh, um rotation speed probably multiplied by the input we're giving. So we have some control again. Um, okay, so if you rotate it, I need to rotate here now. Rotate. Uh, with one or with negative one, then it's gonna go one or the other way. Let's see. Doesn't like that I'm doing that. Oh, and who? Oh, no, I overwrote <laughs> update. Okay. This needs to go here. And this was uh, position plus equals plus D. Okay, I'm going to press left and right, and it's going to crash. Um, rotate not found, because I'm called it orient, not rotate. Rotate is a better name. Let's call it that. Okay, I'm doing rotate and it's rotating, but you're not seeing it. Look, you, you can see it moves in a different direction and that's working, but the, the graphics are not rendering differently. That's because when we're uh, deforming the shape to be in the position and size we want, that's, that's also, uh, we are not rotating the thing. So we also need to do that. And this is the scale. Let's give it an actual variable. Uh, size, uh, which is 30, size, nice, okay, so to update the positions of the shape to the rotation, we just rotate each point around an origin, and that's a challenge, because if we do it like this, we will do rotate each um, by the rotation, we do uh, bind that so that was it correctly oh it's gone it's happening oh yeah i need to rotate before i'm gonna scale it oh it's also it's still gone why is it gone okay i understand now so i was doing rotation here but in this scope rotate is already taken that's why i call it orient and this is quite a thing to watch out for because this creates very confusing bugs like now it just flies away. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so let's call it orient and call the orient function. And then doesn't do anything because we're testing and turn these off. Okay, left, right, wow, and boost. Whoa, <laughs> perfect. This is our game. Okay, so there are a few things going wrong. One is it's rotating around the first point because that's the zero, zero point. And what we want is to rotate around the center. Um, yeah, so um, with my last game, I worked on this function to calculate the center. I'll paste it here. Uh, if you're not used to BQN or, or array languages, this looks very weird. But if you start to be able to read it, this is quite OK. Um, it just encapsulates the thing, then uh, wait. it just takes all these elements, uh, takes the length, uh, adds everything and, and divides by the length. So that's like um, add elements divide by length. That's just the average position of the whole shape. That's what you get from the shape center function. So um, we want to rotate around a center point and our current function doesn't allow for a center point position. So that's quite simple to add. What we want to do is to um, to subtract the offset at first and then add it later. It does make function a lot more messy because we need another parameter, which is offset. Um, and then we need to add set to um, x and y. But we also need to save that. So what I usually do is this. Oh, uh, plus an offset. This creates a function which is adding to offset and it takes the y x and it applies the function to it and then saves it into itself again. That's how I see it at least. Oh wait, I need to subtract first and then add here. Uh, and here, uh, this if you don't return this, because the last line on the function is going to be returned, if you don't save it anywhere, then um, then it doesn't do anything. So we just store this in y and x y again with a modifier, um, and we don't need to do this as a function. We can just say this plus offset because, as I said, the last line is returned. That should give it an option for offset. Um, and we need to give it that offset. So here it's the center of the shape. We can call that function shape center with the player, player shape. Oh. With the player shape and also here and this is a bit messy um, we can also just store this player shape, shape center which is shape center of player shape um, and naming is quite bad here but okay <laughs> naming is hard right <laughs> uh, shape center and we give the same thing here when, wrote, when boosting. Center. Okay, so we rotate run center, that's perfect. Um, we're going to the right side though. This is not working very well. Hmm. Let's see. I feel like we should be going up or down. Uh, 
Okay. So I shouldn't do the offset here. Um, because the shape center is based on the smaller size player. Um, and then you're offsetting it to all the way to the left. Okay, so now if you run it, you can go in direction, click boost, and you go in that direction. You can also see now you go forever, and I want a tiny bit of friction because the game has that. So let's create a friction, which is 0 0.01. And in the update, we'll add that the velocity is multiplied by the friction. So now, oh, it needs a separation. Okay, that doesn't work. Um, oh yeah, of course, if I make it that small, it's gonna be small very quickly. It needs to be quite big or quite close to zero. So now it slows down a tiny bit. Um, what I'm also doing wrong is left for some reason now goes the other way. So right is one and left is minus one. Um, and I don't want space, I want up arrow. That makes more sense to me. Yeah, okay. So you can't really feel, but this works very well. Whee. And maybe I want a bit more boost to be a bit quicker. Um, so let's change the boost. Boost uses speed. Speed can be twice as quick. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so second thing, we want some asteroids. Um, let's create an asteroid class. which has a position, which is going to be center again. It has a size, because there are multiple sizes, which is a random value um, for the range, um, around five different sizes. We can add one to that, because you don't want a zero size. Um, it wants a velocity to see how quick it goes, which is zero, zero. Yeah, which we can just assign some random value. Um, so random range. Um, two plus, oh wait, so at the mi a minimum of two, then can be two, three. Um, and this needs to be done for two values and I just do that by doing this um, for each of these create a random value so this will end up being you can see it on the right 4-4 four, four, or 2-2 two, two. actually yeah okay that's the right actually okay can also be 3-3 three, three, I hope or not oh yeah 3-3 three, three. okay um, this needs to be able to be drawn and it needs to be able to update um, draw you can get to later update first is just simply position it's going to be grown by the velocity um, I guess that's it that's it uh, we can just quickly just to see what happens. Draw a circle. Let's see in Ray what a circle does. Actually, it's in Ray Lib. There's a circle, I think. Circle. Or not? Oh no, Ray of Fine. Circle. Uh, draw a circle. Not image. Draw a circle. Draw a circle. 3D. Draw a circle. Okay. We got center X, center Y, radius, and color. Um, so center X, center Y is our position. Then we hook that up with radius, which is our size, which it should be scaled up a bit. And then a color, 
white. No, white. Okay. Um, size. So let's call this skill. No, let's call this skill. Our skill is twenty, and we scale up our size. With our scaler. And we need to create these. So we also create some asteroids, which are the asteroid function applied to a range of, for example, five things. So then we have five asteroids and we give these to the player. Uh, and what I did last time was create a world object. So instead of just one object, this is a real world. Um, and the world consists of, consists of uh, all the objects in it. Oh, um, this can be player. It should be here. It should be the world. And we also pass the world again. Uh, we can also draw um, for each thing in the world. Draw. That thing. So then that's how we replace these. Draw each thing. Uh, this should be update. Okay, so we update each thing in the world and we draw each thing in the world. Uh, and it has both functions which should be exported. So that should work and it doesn't because um wrong argument amount expected for got seven probably because this shouldn't be hook but a list expected for got two um let's check draw circle ah yeah color should be a whole object so like that no. Let's check what it is. Oh. Color is an object, and these are three objects. Two floats, and one. Oh, two integers and one float, and the color. And one is in not an integer in the position. So position should be the floor. Oh. Floor. That one. Mm. So we round it down. Yay! Oh wow, asteroids. Uh, okay, let's stop drawing or stop showing. They're here, they're moving in different sizes. Um, and they're moving one direction because the velocity is only positive, it should also be negative. That's a good one. So let's make this a function, uh, which does for each of these. Um, let's see. This should be the scale amount. It should be able to do that. We have the rand range function which takes the parameter um, and also subtracts half of the parameter yeah perfect okay mm, we've drawn circles there are asteroids they shouldn't start from the center, but they should start more spread out. We can also grab this one, make it a bigger function, which is center, I guess, plus something like this. And this should be bigger, could be bigger. For example, uh, width divided by two and height divided by two.
No, uh, uh, yeah, it needs a rounded value. So, so let's round it. Yeah, oh, and it crashes when it's outside the screen. Is down right. Player at orient. Aha. Yeah, I'm passing a player. A player isn't a thing. Player is just a function. So I need to get player. And the rule, which I used last time, was that player is always the first object in the world. So I can define player as the world uh, picking the first object of the world. And then I have player again, and this should work. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So the asteroids are gone now. <laughs> and they should actually do some looping. They should go from one side to the other. If you write a shader, that can be way more beautiful because then they can... Uh, actually draw half one side half the other side but now I'm just gonna move them if they're out of the if they're off screen and same for the player you should also move to the other side this is also quite a neat thing to do in BQN uh, so let's start with the player the position is the so we have the position plus is velocity but we can make this a function uh, yeah, let's make a function where we get velocity in the x and the y velocity, um, and then say that the the width is modulus the x, and the um, height is modulus um, the y. Let's see how I did last time. Mm. Yeah, that should be it. If we run this, um, oh yeah, this is its own function. This is its function, and if we do this in braces, it becomes a two train. And then, if we go from one side, we move back. Wow. Vroom. Because now uh, modulus just loops. If the x is too bigger than the width, it just loops back to zero. And the same for the height. So we add and then we give these parameters, these values, the, which is the new position, the plus t plus position. So the new position, and then we just do the modulus and the separate values of it. And this we can just steal and give it to the asteroid. Nice. Now the asteroids do it as well. Boop. So everything stays in the screen. Okay. And we also want to be able to shoot. So let's create a bullet class for bullets. Uh, a bullet also has a position, which is just zero, zero at the start. Actually, these parameters you want to give to give um, to a position and a rotation. So position and rotation are now known. It has an update um, where the position is scaled by the velocity, which you create L equals velocity is calculated from the rotation again so we rotate a zero one factor by the rotation with a zero 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 origin um yeah and to an up arrow an up arrow uh, and we draw it Okay, um, drawing is just we can do rectangles, the rectangles a thing, which on its left side has a color, uh, color dot white, and on its right side is a two by two matrix of its position and its size. Um, so what we want to do. Yeah, it needs to have a size. 
which can be quite small, 4 for example. Um, we take in a position and a size. We take half of the size that we use to, um, let's see, I'm making this very complicated. <laughs> uh, position minus that size. Oh. So position is going to be subtracted and added, and those are going to be in a list. Okay, so we can just delete this. Um, if we do this in braces, that should work, I think. What's wrong? Update the sevens. Oh yeah, it's uh, TS. So this is a two train. We have a position and a size. We're going to subtract the position from half the size, add it to half the size, and then do it up and down. So then we have a square, which is with the origin in the center, and then around it. Yeah. Um, we need to create some bullets, but bullets aren't created at the start. Well, we can just draw them at the start to see if it works. Bullets, oh. bullet, uh, range five or something, and just also we touch the bullets. See what happens. Oh, bullets! It's not happy. Header doesn't match. Element. Oh yeah, I need to give these parameters. Um. Let's just do one. Still not happy. Trying to read a field from a non namespace. Bullet. With these parameters, bullets. Read a field from a non namespace. Ah. Okay. Um, bullets, things also need to be exported. Okay, so I just created one bullet. I started. Oh. Okay, this needs to be rounded off. Here's the bullet. Like that. Okay, so here's the bullet flying. Wow. Can be even smaller and the velocity can be bigger. So let's multiply it by uh, five. This is then its speed. There was the bullet, yay. Okay, so the logic of a bullet is you can shoot, of course. Um, so let's create the ability to shoot. Space is for shooting. And um, yeah, so here's the thing. We can only access the player now. We want the world, but um, we want to create a world, an object. We can, uh, outside of the start function. So this is another ugly pattern. I'm going to give these functions the ability to add something to the world, even though you actually only want to normally encapsulate, I think, that to one position. But I'm just going to give this the whole world. Define player here as well as the first thing in the world. These and then when space is pressed, I'm gonna add this is a area, sorry. I'm gonna add a bullet to the world. Um, so world attaching, um, while well, modifying it a new bullet uh, and this needs some information i can start by trying out center and um what was the other one rotation pi which would mean that oh yeah i need to return the world as well oh yeah and um i need to collect it here again so here you can see our uh 
our muta mutating everything is gonna start. So I will write it down like this. Oh wait, input. So our world is gonna go into input and then back into world again. Um, if I run this, I press space, it's gonna shoot. Whee! It's only gonna shoot out because that's how we instantiated the object. Uh, first, you can see it shoots a lot of stuff. You don't want that. It's if key is key uh, is key input key pressed is pressed. That's what we want. Is pressed is only going to do it one frame. Um, also, we want some information about where the player is and where to rotate the bullet to. So. I don't really like the pattern, but I guess we should. Uh, I, I don't really know another way now to do it easily. So get bullet info or bullet info to get some information which the bullet needs. Um, so we're going to get a position and um, an orientation. That's all we want. So we'll return that. Um, so we go to player .bullet info, and this will get us the information. I need to give it a parameter. Pew, 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 pew. Okay, rotation isn't working and position isn't working. That's, let's see why. Bullet info is the correct name. Player is the correct object. Position refers to the position which is updated rotation as well. And in my mind it should work. Oh. Yeah. Let's not do that. We attach a bullet at the center. Oh, we're not parsing it in. Where did I add it? Ooh. Huh? That's strange. Okay. Bullet info. Huh. It's not there for some reason. Okay. Um, player dot get a bullet info. Okay. Okay. Sorry, my camera died. The other one was better, but okay. Um, Okay, so we're getting the bullet info, we're passing it to the bullet, and then we can shoot from the player. Only as you can see, the position from which we shoot is not very, it's not what we want. And that's because it's the zero position and we want it to shoot from the tip. So we need to get information about the tip of the player, um, about where it is. So let's define a function for that as well. Um, player, player, tip, which is a function where we get the shape player and we access the tip, which is the last value of the thing. So let's rotate it, oh. and rotate it and access the first one then. That should be the tip, and that's what we want to get here. Here, tip. Okay, so now we're shooting from the tip. Yeah. This looks good already. These bullets will never get destroyed because they fly off and there nothing happens. So we want to give them some uh, lifetime uh, but for now what we can do is see if it's off screen and then kill them we can do that in an update um, if we give this some space we can just see if the position bigger than width or height um, what this will get us is you can see it here 
Mm. Oh, yeah. This is a Boolean mask of either the width or the height, which is of screen. We want to or fold that to see if either of them are off screen. Um, wrap them. If that's the case, then our life is, oh, I'm in totally in the wrong place. I see that now, okay. Our life is zero, oh, is zero. Otherwise do nothing. Okay, we're gonna grab this, put it in the bullets. it's in there um, okay so if it's off screen our life is now zero we need to have a life vari variable a life which is zero uh, which is one at first and we need some sort of collector which uh, deletes all the things which are uh, which are not alive so let's go here uh, clean world like that function which is a function which uh, it gets the world and also returns the world. What it's going to do is going to uh, go through the world, see if the variable dot life uh, life matches zero or doesn't match zero. Oh. If that's the case, we we remove everything that. Um, so we repeat, this is the repeat index indices. If uh, this is a Boolean mask, so if it's matched, if it's still alive, then we keep it. Otherwise we don't do anything with it. And then the world becomes this thing where only things uh, we pick out from the world, um, the indices that are still alive. And here we return a new world where everything that's dead is gone. What's dead is gone. Okay, um, we are so going to do this here. After everything, we're going to clean the world. Stop it, run it. Clean world doesn't work. Rules must match. Oh, I do need to ask. Mm. Not everyone has a life, because an asteroid doesn't have a life. Oh, um, I'm running it differently. Live. This should be live. <laughs> okay. Uh, trying to reach field from non named space. I'm passing in the world. I'm not passing in anything. I need to do this to the oh, world. Yes. Okay. And now the things that are off screen, you don't really see it, they're going to get deleted. Um, okay, I guess the last thing we want is just to be able to shoot these guys. Um, I can also do the drawing, making them a bit wiggly. I think I'm going to do that and keep it at that because I'm. it's very late and I'm a bit tired. And if there are people want to see more, I can make a second video going further. But what I'm gonna do now is just create the squiggliness of the shapes. So to do that, we are not gonna draw a circle, but uh, we're gonna generate a list of points of points which are round and then offset them and then draw each point from point to point as a line. Um, so let's see. First, we create a shape again, like with the player. Um, here, I need to look at my old code a bit. Player, asteroid, create shape. Okay, so this is a function, create shape. shape. And we get some parameters, which is the amount of points. I call it vertice count. 
and the uh, offset chance and as you can see the offset size so how much is going to offset those are the variables from which we're going to generate them um, let's create a function which creates a circle from points that's quite easy to do you want the range of um, our input value x from this function so our input would be how much points we want in the circle um, we're first going to add one so that we don't have a zero value um, because zero we can't really do anything with uh, I think that was logic then we grab pi times two uh, which is a whole full circle we're gonna divide that by the amount of uh, pieces but I'm gonna swap it because it's pi divided by the amount and that means that um, we're gonna go through each point and um, oh that means we're separating pi into pieces which are the size which would make a whole circle if you were to add all these pieces together that's the logic then we have a function here which goes over these pieces and offsets them a bit oh no no wait we're gonna rotate because this is now a list uh, with sizes which will form a circle but now we need to create the circle so we're gonna use the rotate function uh, with the zero factor going to the top to going up then we create we use the x as the rotation um, x in this case doesn't mean the, the amount of variables but it means the input to this function which is the current position um, and a zero zero oh, zero zero offset oh. That's because I have this parameter, I need to fill it in. That's quite a bit, quite ugly actually, but okay. So we have a function which creates a circle. We can check it out if we want. Uh, for example, a circle of five points. If you run it, it says there's a problem. Um, the range. Oh yeah, this needs to be multiplied by that. I oh, yeah, wrote it, it's not defined now. Um, so what I'm doing is adding one, multiplying by Okay, I'm just running the function here so you can see there is a circle created with all its positions around. Um, so what we want, now we have this circle with all these positions, we want to offset them a bit to make them a bit squiggly, squiggly biggly. Um, I made this function, we first create the circle with the V count, that's the amount of points it should have, which this function accounts for. Then we are going over all the points in the circle. Um, we take a random value with the offset chance um, and we see if that's zero. So this just creates a chance that this is gonna be multiplied by either zero or one, which is just gonna add the effect or not. And to the left of this, we are creating the offset itself, um, which I defined as, so we multiply it so that the mask works. Um, we use off size, offset size, Um, then a function which creates the random value to the left of that x minus this is the function x here is the offset size um, there we use okay so we use offset size twice Go. 
Okay, so use of the site size twice. There we use uh, go of each of those. Do a random dot range um, with these sizes, and we multiply this by a scalar to give it some resolution which is um, just 10 and then we divide by 10 again in the back and um, then we subtract that from x so this is a lot of stuff happening but it's actually very simple it's just noisy and not very well written so we have a mask which does it or doesn't do it we multiply by that so the value is either zero or the thing you're doing on the left uh, then we have the offset size which we specify which is the maximum size it can get uh, which will be two parameters uh, for the x and the y position then we go over the x and the y position we pass in the range uh, i can actually get rid of these we um, pass in this maximum size multiplied by 10 so that we get a bigger channel because range only works in integers and we want some resolution uh, we get the random value then we divide it by 10 again so that gets the original value but with the more detail and then we subtract x from all of this and x is the the point which we're changing so it's the point minus this random offset that's essentially what's happening and that creates the shape which we want to draw um, so we need to start to draw it this we can get rid of we can draw, draw lines where we go over each uh, point in great shape uh, the shape we just created at the start so uh, my shape i don't know we just create shape with some parameters um, so the v count we just give it at 10 vertices the offset chance one out of three and the offset size is just 0 0.8 so maximum 0 0.8 points offset and that's before scaling so afterwards it's going to get scaled um, and we're going to draw that what i used last time was um, the draw line function on the left side of it we do see that uh, white the color and on the right side what we're gonna do is um, scan over the value with the scan operator which is gonna get it gonna put this function in between each time so it's gonna get the right and the left it's gonna go between them and you get the right and the left one which you points and from which you can draw the, the lines um, the function wants um, in a two-dimensional array, so let's give it like that. The one and the other uh, in a two-dimensional array. And as a return value for this function, which is going to determine what the next iteration is going to have as the, I think, right-hand side parameter, it's just going to be x. Or left-hand side, I guess, then. It's just going to be x. Um, Oh, actually, this is. Uh, I'm gonna use this one. This is the scan. Sorry, I was confused by this one, which is full insert. No, I'm gonna use scan. I'm still learning these. <laughs> okay. Um, so my shape is gonna go in there. Um, actually, not. Um, we need to first. This is a very small one, just like with the player. We want to scale it up, so we're gonna get. Uh, shape shape again which is gonna get the oh no this is gonna get my shape which is gonna get my shape and uh, do the usual stuff to it my shape oh. we're gonna um, do it here. scale it up with size Multiplied by scale. Okay, and um, add position. 
to it and that should work so we use instead of my shape we use uh, shape shape just with a parameter doesn't know my shape I think no those two assignments doesn't match oh, yeah, I need the S okay but the problem as you can see here they are now weird lines um, one of the biggest things is that the first iteration of a scan doesn't have the the fur the you need the last point at the first at the start so that you can also draw the last line uh, what we can do is just hard code that into the shape the way i did that last time was with this function this just um, creates a two uh, fork or a two train where you have the left function which is just the result of the last stuff and then you pick an element, you enclose it, and then you list. Uh, so you pick the first element, you enclose it, and you add it to the end of the list. And then you have the end part again. So now there are different shapes, but they're a bit wonky. Uh, let's see what's happening. Great mm, shape. Okay, I can't really seem to fix it now, <laughs> and it's getting really late, so um, I don't really know if this is a thing people want to see. I would enjoy it, but it may be a bit long dragged. If you want to see how the other parts of the game work, like the splitting of asteroids, better drawing of asteroids, the little fire flame, the uh, maybe the score counter. Um, if you want to see that, I can make the video longer. And I hope I'm interested to see if this is interesting. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, I hope it was enjoyable and don't judge me on this code because there are a lot of bad practices. I wanted to keep it chill and this is just some random live coding. So, okay. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.